Hi, my name is Swati and I'm presenting our result on positive semi-definite programming. This is joint work with Arun Jambulapati and Kevin Thian, graduate students at Stanford, Jerry Lee, researcher at MSR Redmond, and my advisor, Inta Lee, at the University of Washington. We start by defining positive semi-definite program. Given PSD matrices P1 through PD and C1 through CD, we want to find the minimum positive number mu such that there exists an element-wise non-negative d-dimensional vector x satisfying the following two constraints. First, the sum of the matrices pi scaled by xi is in the PSD sense at most mu times the identity. And second, the sum of the matrices ci scaled by xi is in the PSD sense at least the identity. If we visualize the identity matrix as a sphere, then the first constraint asks for the minimum scaling factor mu such that the scale sum of the d ellipsoids pi can be packed inside the mu scale sphere. Similarly, the second constraint requires that the sum of these ellipsoids ci scaled by xi covers the sphere. We call this first constraint the packing constraint and the second one the covering constraint. A subtle point to note in the definition is that while packing and covering LPs are dual to each other, packing and covering SDPs are not. As a consequence of this fact, um, solving a packing LP immediately gives us a solution to its dual covering LP, but that's not the case with SDPs. In fact, before our work, there was no efficient width independent algorithm for solving covering SDPs the way we defined them and many fundamental problems in TCS fall in this category. To illustrate one such example, consider the SDP relaxation of max cut as provided by Gomins and Williamson in 1995. The dual of this problem is exactly a covering SDP. Positive SDPs are ubiquitous in the SDP relaxations of graph problems such as coloring, sparsest cut, balance separator, etc. A specialization of positive SDPs is the class of positive LPs, which encompasses important problems like multi-commodity flow, optimal transport, resource allocation, among others. Given the fundamental nature of this problem, it's not surprising to see that there has been quite a bit of work on it. Before looking at some previous work, I'll first describe the three features we care about in our work. The word mixed, refers to problems with both packing and covering constraints. We call problems with only one of these constraints as pure packing or pure covering. The word parallel refers to algorithms that update the coordinates of x all at once. And the width of a positive LP refers to the largest absolute value of the entries of its constraint matrices. One of the first parallel algorithms for pure packing and covering LPs was by Trotkin, Schmoyce, and Tadosh in 1991, followed by the first width independent algorithm by Luby and Nissan in 1993. In 2001, Young gave the first parallel and width independent algorithm for mixed packing and covering LPs. Most of these early works were quite combinatorial in nature. Recently, Alanju and Arekia were able to break a long standing barrier in the runtime of algorithms for these problems by using techniques from convex optimization. Finally, we highlight the work of Mahoney, Rao, Wong, and Zhang in 2016, since theirs is the algorithm we generalize. We now look at the previous work in the case of packing SDPs. Recall again, before our work, there did not exist efficient with independent algorithms for covering SDPs. In this setting, the width is defined to be the largest spectral norm of all constraint matrices. The first width independent algorithm for packing SDPs was by Jane and Yao. Recently, their runtime was significantly improved by the work of Alan Zhu, Li, and Arekia, and separately by Peng, Peng Wong Sang, and Zhang. However, notice that none of these works solves SDPs that have both packing and covering constraints. Our main contribution is in filling this gap. We give the first algorithm for positive SDPs with both packing and covering constraints that is parallelizable and that is width independent. 
our algorithm has epsilon to the minus three parallel iterations. We describe the total parallel work later. For this class of problems, we define width as the maximum of this ratio over here. When specialized to the case of pure packing SDPs, we improve upon the state of the art result with epsilon to the minus two parallel iterations. And when specialized to the case of covering SDPs, we give the first efficient, efficient width independent algorithm. At a high level, our key technique is to modify and generalize the work of MRWZ16 by removing an asymmetry in their algorithm and using linear algebraic ideas in a novel way. Some of these ideas include the heavy use of Schur complement, for example, to prove a matrix version of the Cauchy Schwartz inequality, opening up the proof of the extended leaf Turing inequality, and an analysis of different buckets of eigenspaces using what we call the big small lemma. We now provide our problem setup. Recall again that we are given these PSD packing and covering matrices. Um, we now consider Px and Cx as defined here. Then this optimization problem we have can be reduced to a decision problem by choosing different values of mu using a binary search. <clears throat> the epsilon is our accuracy parameter. To solve the decision problem involving these eigenvalues, we instead work with the potential function f total, which is a smooth approximation to lambda max of px minus lambda min of cx. We can therefore view it as a difference of this packing potential and this covering potential. Throughout the algorithm, we ensure that the total potential f total is at most log n. We terminate when either the maximum eigenvalue of Px or the minimum eigenvalue of Cx exceeds log n over epsilon. This potential invariance and termination condition together ensure the desired epsilon multiplicative accuracy of our solution, which we can see as follows. Recall again, the potential condition is roughly this statement. Rewriting log in this manner and noting that um, by the termination condition, we can upper bound log n over epsilon in terms of lambda max of px gives us the inequality that we want in our desired, in our decision problem. The way we maintain this total potential invariance is by separately tracking the packing and covering potentials. We first show that the packing potential increases by at most a certain amount. And then we show that the covering potential increases by at least a certain amount which ensures that the difference between them is bounded. Here is our algorithm. We initialize x to be this uniform vector with step size roughly epsilon. Recall again that the termination condition is that one of these eigenvalues must exceed log n over epsilon. We then compute the gradient of the packing potential and the gradient of the covering potential. Since we want the packing potential minus the covering potential to be bounded, we update only those entries of x for which the gradient of the packing potential is smaller than that of the covering potential. We now show how to analyze the change per iteration in packing and covering potentials when running this algorithm. As a warm up, we start with the simpler setting of mixed packing covering linear programs, modifying the work of MRWZ16. The packing and covering potentials get appropriately modified from the matrix to the vector setting. In each step of the algorithm, the packing potential changes by at most the inner product displayed here. We use phi to denote px and a and g to denote the first and second order increments in px respectively. The main idea of the proof is that since the vector a is element-wise small, we can do a Taylor approximation. Here's a complete proof of the packing potential lemma for the LP case. The first inequality is by Taylor expansion around a, and the second is by this bound aj squared um, upper bounded by gj. The reason that aj is small is by feasibility of x, which tells us that the max among all entries of px is small, which means that every entry of px is small. The bound on aj square comes from cauchy schwarz inequality and again, the feasibility of x. This concludes the proof of the packing potential lemma in the LP setting. 
we now look at the change uh, in the covering potential per iteration, again, in the LP setting. Here, psi is the vector Cx, and b and h are the first and second order increments in Cx. A crucial point to note here is that the proof of the packing potential from the LP case does not immediately apply for this statement. This is because the feasibility of x guarantees that only the minimum value of, only the minimum entry of Cx is small. This means we do not have an entry-wise bound on all the elements of B, and so we can't simply appro tailor approximate the left-hand side of the, of the result that we want. Therefore, to prove this lemma, all previous works dropped the covering constraints that had been satisfied, because those are the ones which correspond to large coordinates of Cx. But the problem is that dropping constraints doesn't really translate to anything meaningful in the SDP setting, which is what we care about. This issue motivated our observation that the large values of psi don't affect x of negative psi that much. We therefore do not drop any constraints and instead tailor expand the left-hand side around small coordinates of psi and add back in the terms with larger values of psi, suffering only a small additive loss. Here's an informal version of the result that we just stated. The proof follows by splitting the sum on the left-hand side into sum over terms that have large yj's and those that have small yj's, and using the fact that the difference between the small yj's and the smallest yj is at most a polylog quantity. This concludes the proof sketch of the covering potential lemma in the LP setting. Thus, we have this upper bound on the increase in packing potential, a lower bound on the increase in the covering potential, and by some simple algebra, we can conclude that this gives us the claimed potential invariance. As mentioned before, this additive log approximation of the potential gives us the desired epsilon multiplicative guarantee on the solution. We now move on from the LP setting to the SDP setting, which is the focus of our work. We first prove this packing potential bound, which looks very similar to the bound in the LP case, with the analogous first and second order terms in the inner product. So the question is, does the proof of the LP case translate to that of the SDP case? And the answer is yes. This simple property of exp of exponential doesn't have a direct analog in matrix land, but we do have the Golden-Thompson inequality, which suffices for us. We have the same upper bound on the increment of Px in both the LP and SDP settings, and the cauchy schwarz inequality, which we used in the LP case, does have an analog in the matrix world, which is known as Scatterson's inequality. We now present this matrix cauchy schwarz inequality in a, little bit detail, in a little bit more detail, since we use it quite a bit. The statement of the lemma is as follows. You're given positive semi-definite matrices Mi, which satisfy the condition that the sum of the matrices is upper bounded by k times the identity, and you're given these non-negative scalar ci, then we have this matrix Cauchy-Schwarz inequality. The proof is quite simple. Um, we construct this matrix and can check by simply writing out its quadratic form that this matrix is in fact PSD, we can then use the fact that summing over PSD matrices gives us another PSD matrix, and then we apply this upper bound on the sum of MIs. And then we finally use the fact that the Schur complement of a PSD matrix is also PSD and rearrange to get the desired inequality. Schur complement is a technique that we repeatedly use in this work. We now see the change in covering potential in the SDP case, and here's our result for it. Again, the result looks quite similar to that of the LP case, and one might imagine that it should be easy to generalize that proof. But it turns out that this is not at all a trivial generalization, and we see why. Recall that the key idea in the covering potential proof in the LP case was to consider only the small coordinates of psi and add back in the terms with larger psi, thus suffering a small additive loss. In the SDP case, this would correspond to um, restricting ourselves to small eigenspaces of capital psi. 
But the issue is that this inequality, which we used here, is false, which means that this proof doesn't work by itself. Another approach we could consider is from the work of <clears throat> Alan Ju, Lee, and Arikia in 2016. They construct a function that interpolates between the quantity that we want, which is trace x of negative psi and negative b, and the quantity that we have. And if we could prove this inequality up to a small additive error, then by applying the techniques of AZLO, we could finish the proof. But again, the problem is this inequality does not hold because we, we were able to construct a counterexample for it. And so this approach by itself also does not work. So at a very high level, what we do is to prove, what we do to prove the covering potential lemma in the SDP setting is to modify and combine the first idea of eigenspace buckets with the second idea of an interpolating function and apply tools like Schur complement, matrix cauchy schwarz inequality, leap thurings inequality, Grunewald's lemma, and what we call the big small lemma. We can then combine the packing potential bound that we showed earlier and this covering potential bound and repeat the analysis of MRWZ16 to get epsilon to the minus three iterations. This concludes the proof of the iteration count for our algorithm, the proof sketch. We now talk about some of the implementation details. We use this notation to denote the cost of multiplying a matrix exponential with a vector. The total cost per iteration is the minimum of these two costs. Using the fact that the packing potential um, function px is upper bounded until termination, the cost of matrix exponential times vector for the packing matrices can then be reduced to this quantity. In some covering instances like graph specification, we can guarantee something similar um, for the covering case. In other specialized instance, instances like graph Laplacian, which have linear system solvers, we can, we can get this runtime. And finally, the gradients are computed using the johnson linden strauss lemma and um, termination can be checked using power method. We now conclude with a few open problems and future work. Um, one question is, do we really need the polylogarithmic dependence on width in our runtimes? Another question is if we can get rid of the use of phases to analyze the iteration complexity. Um, another question is to see if we can get a parallel accelerated rate for packing and covering LPs. And finally, we can always ask if the matrix exponential times vector uh, operation can be made more efficient by maybe using tools like sketching. And that's all I have to say. Thank you for your attention.